Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. We're going to get started first by indicating the topmost placement for the head. I'm using just, uh, what is this? This is Neutrum, see if we can focus. There it is, Neutrum Charcoal, okay? Neutrum Charcoal. So um, the purpose for today's demonstration is going to be uh, to focus a little bit more into perspective, especially perspective in portrait drawing. So I'm just starting off with basic shape, okay? So I'm supposing that this is the dimension that I want for the head. Now ideally, you want to make your lines as light as possible for drawing initially. Uh, I'm working a little bit um, with a little more force, so there's a much darker line here that I'm placing than uh, I would recommend. And that is just because I want you to be able to see the marks that I'm making. So we are doing a Bouguereau Master Study uh, drawing version. That is the photo reference that you see in the top left corner there. Here is the name and the picture of the, uh, the Bouguereau. This is a cropped version of the Bouguereau painting. Okay, there is the name and the uh, information that you need to find a similar photo reference of this painting. Now, of course, I will not be linking the actual photo reference just because I don't really want to get demonetized. So if you do a quick Google search of this painting, of the painting that I uh, named out for you, the one we're using for the photo reference over there, you will be able to find it quite easily. And I really do invite you to draw, or if you would like to create a painting of it, you can uh, paint along with me. But this one is more geared towards uh, drawing. So just a few simple lines here to indicate the extremities of each corner. So for this corner back here, up here, and over here. So the model is in, in action, so she's uh, turned. Her head is turned. And the Bouguereau is a really good source to look at for drawing in particular. You know, even if you are just going to do a study like this one of one of his paintings, just because his draftsmanship is just, it's incredible. He was an incredible draftsperson. Okay, so now we're going to do our first little indicators for the uh, perspective. So the ear, though I probably have to move it a little bit. So I'm going to use a chamois cloth as an eraser. I usually prefer to use a more seasoned chamois cloth meaning one that's already seen a couple drawings uh, but somehow I managed to lose my chamois I had two of them one that was more seasoned and another one that was less seasoned so whatever it's okay this one will eventually get seasoned and then I'll get another one so anyway I'm thinking of the point from here to here okay so uh, with perspective this pose in particular is very difficult this is probably one of the most difficult poses you can possibly have and that is because the model's head is very close to profile though we can still see a little bit of the the other side of the model's uh, face just a little bit over there um, but that's not the most difficult thing the thing is that her head is turned in perspective so to put that in perspective uh, her if look at this thing of uh, turpentine right if I turn it like this that's what the model's head is doing she's turned she's kind of in uh, a turn like this right and her head is tipped back so that that's really gonna be the challenge with this pose so you have to imagine okay here's the axes and remember the purpose of this is to do a master study it is to learn from the masters that is the purpose with a drawing as the end result so it's going to look a little bit strange at first. 
So there is the axis for the um, the turn of the head, the ear. So a pretty good indicator for the turn of the head is that you're going to see more of this area here, more of the bottom of the um, the jaw and you're going to see the ear is actually going to move higher up and the more and more the head will turn this way the more the ear will, will turn up there now that's what you really want to think about in terms of perspective so now we're going to start to indicate the eye sockets so i'm going to use a horizontal okay so eye goes about here that's about right. Now, again, in terms of perspective, um, lines that are parallel to one another, as you as you probably know, this is a, a very basic thing in perspective, but nonetheless, I should reiterate it. Lines that are parallel when facing you forward will have a vanishing point when you turn them. So that is, uh, you know, the axes for the eyes and the nose are more or less parallel when the model is facing you forward. But when the model is turned three-quarter, or, uh, you know, in this case, it's three-quarter very close to profile, these lines are going to converge. So here's the axes for the nose, okay? This and this will converge into a single vanishing point at some point very, very far away because, um, you know, the model's head is not enormous, you know, like a skyscraper. Photographs, photo references tend to overdo uh, these vanishing points. They tend to overdo perspective. Of course, that all depends on the camera that you use and the lens, but whatever. Um, this is more about uh, being able to, you know, look at the perspective and identify it in your own drawing. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw vertical from here to here. And I'm looking at the main triangle, okay? This is very important whether you're doing an oil painting drawing, like a umber sketch, um, graphite, or, or whatever. This is a very important step. You know, take your time with the main triangle. You know, and other than, uh, you know, rather than looking at the, um, you know, the mouth, like jumping right into the mouth, um, try to look at the structures surrounding the mouth. And already, it hasn't even been like six minutes, already you can kind of tell that the model's head is turned, okay? You can tell, you know, something's going on in terms of perspective. It's not your usual pose. It's a very active pose. And this is all, I would consider this the gesture. Okay, in order to, so remember, gesture just basically means identifying the basic movement of a pose, okay? With just a few simple lines. And in order to get the gesture, even though the gesture seems like such a basic thing, it really isn't. In order to get the gesture, you really need to have a pretty good understanding of perspective. And everything that I've just told you about perspective, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to need to know for, uh, you know, getting the gesture of a particular pose. And I think it's just, uh, I think it's just better to demonstrate these things as opposed to, you know, giving you a whole lecture or whatever on uh, perspective and portrait drawing. I think it's just better to see it. I put myself in your position constantly. You know, I would much rather see it done and, you know, have the artist do their best to, uh, you know, articulate words that seem somewhat coherent 
and form a stream of consciousness that would, you know, help you draw along with me or draw, you know, draw along with the artist. Speaking of myself and the third person. But in any case, the mouth, okay, I'm looking at the structure surrounding the mouth. You know, how far does the chin go? I'm not going to use any kind of measuring, just going by eye. We're seeing a little bit of the bottom of the chin there. This goes out. This is a very uh, classical, it's a very classical sensibility. You can even see the eye, whoops, I bumped into the camera. You can even see the eyes, you know, turning towards that center line. The other eye you can't really see, you just see like a little indication there. And again, you're going to check the, uh, so the eyebrow is a little bit higher up than the ear. Just a little bit. Although, in perspective, this is a little strange. So yeah, the ear needs to be a little bit higher up than the usual. And this is also, um, you know, very similar to a Barg drawing. You know, how you would see, um, you know, one of the Barg plates uh, mapped out for you. And if you don't know what I mean by a Barg drawing, so B-A-R-G-U-E, hopefully I spelled that right. Um, but anyway, if you look up Barg drawings, you'll see, you know, the classical way that students learned in the past, 19th century, 20th, uh, yeah, 19th century, 18th century. Uh, I probably got that wrong. But anyway, how they learned in the past you know, is to look at drawings, uh, simple block ends like this, and then recreate them. And that's still, that method still is used in uh, ateliers today. All right, so now that we have this little shape surrounding the mouth, you know, we're gonna now start to put in some little indicators for where the mouth may fit. Just a few simple straight lines. Or the top, the furthest corner to the back. Relate that to the corner of the nostril, like that. Bottom of the mouth. Even the mouth, okay, the mouth is turning this way in perspective. Now, after sitting back, um, I think that what I just did was wrong. Putting the mouth there it needs to go a little bit higher up. And that's okay. That's why I usually say keep your shapes simple and easy so that when the time comes to make changes, those changes are simple and easy to manage. So luckily, um, that leaves a little bit of a ghost for me to see. So now I'm just going to move that shape up a little bit. Very simple. Okay, and not much more than that for that area, okay? Now we're transitioning into the block-in stage. And in perspective, the block-in really should already have, or the drawing, once you get to the block-in stage, should already have an idea, uh, a feeling of perspective. but that can also continue to be enhanced in the block-in stage. And uh, if you're new to this channel, the block-in basically just means simple straight lines and angles are used to simplify form. It's the simplification of form using simple straight lines and angles. And again, no details are needed here, none. Details right now are useless. Just mere decoration. We don't need that. And um, just 
visually something I tend to look at is the uh, angle between this and relate. Uh, sorry, this line and this line. Okay, just in more simple terms, this line and this line. I just kind of look at the shape between them, the space between them. So now for the uh, the mandible. So the ramus of the jaw is somewhere over here. The corner of the jaw bone. This goes up and goes down pretty flat at that point there. And again, you will see more of the bottom of the model's uh, jawline, jawbone with this kind of perspective. And I, I really do think that this is probably the most difficult angle to draw someone. So I'm gonna relate the corner of the mouth down to the chin. I think that needs to come over. And again, take note of the mark making. You know how a line, uh, the way you use the line is uh, kind of important. See how I'm kind of going back and forth? You want your line to be descriptive, but you don't, also, you don't want to be tied down to a single line. You want to have them all working together. So that's the bottom boundary of the jawbone. Here's the ramus. Sorry, the ramus. The ramus hidden here is the uh, tr tragus, tra tragus of the ear. Helix, anti-helix back here. Here's where the hairband goes. Though it's not really that important to the perspective. Though even the hairband is in perspective, it's like turning away. Bouguereau is really one of the ultimate, I think, uh, academic painters. That's why I, I didn't even think about, um, you know, trying to do a. Uh, a master study painting of something like a painting like that um, without some kind of preliminary drawing. Now we can start to put in some indicators for the uh, iris. And then the uh, corner of the eye. The tear duct is hidden all the way back here. So again, this is one of the things that makes portrait drawing so difficult and uh, therefore portrait painting so difficult is that it kind of assumes uh, your knowledge of perspective. So I recommend you do as many of these as possible, really. And I, uh, I highly recommend Bouguereau for this exercise. And the idea with the, um, the block in is to correct mistakes. Make mistakes and correct mistakes. Think of a mistake as a stepping stone to success. Don't fret if you, uh, you know, see yourself making a lot of mistakes. That's natural, okay? Don't let it bother you.
Okay, so after sitting back, I do think that the ear could potentially move this way a little bit. So what do I always say? Keep your shape simple and easy. So that when the time comes to make changes, like that, that ear moving this way, those changes are simple and easy to manage. I'm just gonna stand back. And if you're drawing or painting along with me, every time I stand back, that is an open invitation for you to stand back or sit back along with me. And in the block-in stage, especially when you have a very difficult pose, try to hold back on shadows. I'm only just now starting to block in a simple line for the shadow. I think the tragus can move out a little bit further. So now that I'm starting to get into more focus, I will kind of be a little more quiet, which you may actually prefer. I think the nose could probably push out a little more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go back and forth really between this charcoal and this charcoal. So let's see if I can show you. Yeah, it's kind of worn out, sorry. It's just a um, General's charcoal pencil. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to a more definitive mark on the landmarks of the face. So not only is this going to be about the uh, perspective, but we're also going to talk about the uh, anatomical landmarks of the face. And this is just in my opinion, I mean you could change the, you know which landmarks you want to use and all of that. So I'm going to focus here, tear duct, okay, that's one. Bottom of the nose, so the root of the nose, so that's another one. So I'm just going to erase some of this with the chamois cloth and then with the uh, charcoal pencil. So we're indicating the root of the nose, a little bit of a shadow shape here. shape for the nose. So the length of the nose, um, think about it as the, uh, you know, the distance from the root of the nose here to the next, our next landmark, which is going to be the nasal bone. And um, you really don't want to make a dark mark for it. Rather, you rather, I'm sorry, <laughs> rather, you rather, rather you want to indicate where it is. 
So for us, here, nasal bone is all throughout here. So this is the, the plane for the nasal bone. Right above it, we're going to have the glabella. Now the next uh, point I would look for. I think I might need to move this further back. Is the corner of the mouth. And you can also look for it on the other side. So it's kind of hidden. All we can see is just a dark mark there. And then after that, pretty much just the shapes surrounding the face. So you know the bottom of the chin. So technique wise, what I'm doing is I'm now with the chamois just erasing the marks that I made with the uh, nitrum charcoal and now going over them with a more per eh, permanent mark. Simple straight lines and angles. Okay, so now I'm going to revisit the tear ducts. Uh, so now I'm going to start to construct the planes surrounding the tear ducts. Concavity of the eye socket goes over here. Gets all, all of this gets darker. Now it's a kneaded eraser. I'm going to try to get the kneaded eraser to a fine point. Now it's a small stump. And I just stump, stump in this uh, tone. Now with the other side of the stump. Now we're starting to get into values. So if you're ever struggling with how to approach values, this is how you're going to do it. So you should be looking for the planes, okay? So here's another side plane of the I suck it. So if you don't have a strong understanding of planes, uh, no, no need to worry. I'll be explaining them to the best of my ability here. Here's a plane that you want to look for. Okay, this is the side of the eye socket, and it's getting darker. And I'm using the stump to put in the tone. Darker around here, lighter here. And lighter here because this is an area that's facing the light a little bit more. And even the iris 
So the iris, we're going to subtract a little bit with the chamois. And we're going to retouch this shape here. So here's the pupil. Corner of the eye. So now with the uh, stump, I'm going to use the other side of the stump, spread the tone. I'm going to get you a close-up shot now. All right, so now that you are in a close-up shot, let's continue to put in these values. And I'm looking for the most, um, you know, the most essential values needed so that this drawing can have a sense of three dimensions. But I'm not going to be shading in the entire thing. We're going to make this much more of a classic drawing. I'll explain what I mean by that later. Putting in a little tone there. Okay. All right, so now we're going to move on to the nose. And I think that, um, you know, this was a good start for the nose, uh, but I think we can get in a little more specificity. So again with the chamois. Okay, hold on. I gotta swap out a battery. Alright, so now that I've swapped out a battery, we're gonna continue to develop these shapes. So that is a I think that's a shadow on the corner there. A dark light here. Okay, so now the nose, I'm going to use another vertical. Yep, so I had the wing of the nose a little too long. Should go about there, I believe, anyway. Um, so I needed an eraser. So this is one way to approach uh, the material, okay? So charcoal, starting off with the softer, um, you know, more painterly charcoal, like the Neutrum, and then switching to a more permanent um, charcoal pencil. And by permanent, I mean, um, you know, if you've never worked with uh, charcoal pencil uh, like this. Charcoal pencil is a little harder to erase so that's why I don't prefer to start with it. Uh, I prefer to kind of like get my basic block in with uh, softer vine charcoal or Hussein uh, charcoal and then build onto that contour, build onto those contours with um, charcoal pencil. It's not impossible to erase it. See, I can kind of erase it. It's just much more permanent. So anyway, now that we're getting into um, you know, more specific shapes and also getting into values. The most important values, the first, of course, you know, are light and shadow. But then the question then becomes, well, what do you do after light and shade? So after light and shadow comes a few extra values that are uh, most important, I think, for classical drawing. And that is the dark light 
and then the middle tone and then you're done well actually not really reflected light too if you have it um, so again light and shadow dark light reflected light if you have it and then just middle tone so this is a middle tone and the way you gauge these values is you have to think three-dimensionally okay and you can even expand on your middle tone range though you don't need too much so for instance I'm expanding on the middle tone over here but barely barely see that's barely even visible now we're going to go in um, with the dark light so this is the dark light right along the terminator line the terminator line is the line from which uh, for which uh, shadow uh, begins and light ends or when light ends and shadow begins however you want to think about it Now we're putting in a middle tone for the nose and a little bit of a lighter middle tone there, but that's it. I mean, that's pretty much all for the middle tone. Now the shadow. So there is a little reflected light here, okay? And that is the dark light up here. Dark light, reflected light. Then another shadow. This one is a cast shadow over here. And again, we're seeing a little bit of the other side of the face over here. Just barely. That might even be a little too much, so I'm going to push this in. Now the for the mouth, I'm thinking of the distance from the root of the nose, okay, this is one of the landmarks, down to the upper middle portion of the upper lip. And I think that this distance is alright. We're okay with that. Now we're going to spread a shadow, or draw, shadow over here. And then the lips are in the middle tone, the upper lip that is. Now the um, we are seeing a little bit here of the other side of the face, tiny little sliver of light there. Again, I did say Bulgaro was one of the one of my favorite drafts person drafts people ever. Look at the nuance, the uh, specificity to the bulb of the nose. Again, it's not again it's not really a detail. Remember, I said details are pretty useless. I mean, the only details really are in the you know the drapery or the fabric. But all of that comes secondary. All of that comes secondary to these shapes. I'm going to have a lighter line for the corner of the nose. So think about even the weight 
of your lines, the lines that you apply. Now for the mouth, I did say that the mouth is kind of uh, in perspective as well. Or kind of. A lot. Okay, <laughs> Bugaro knew what he was doing with the perspective here. So uh, let's try to emulate the perspective here. See how, again, I'm going back in uh, with the chamois and, uh, you know, trying to ghost out the, uh, the preliminary lines from earlier. There's a middle middle tone there. Okay, so bottom of the lower lip. This is turning away from us. Lower lip here, turning away from us. It's just like I showed you with that thing of turpentine, tilting it back. So the pose is tilted back. Like I said, we really want a sense of perspective. And there's a few little teeth here, but I'm not going to draw that. Don't need it. And then, we're going to put a little half tone for the lower lip. I'm going to switch to a different pencil. This one is a little sharper. A little sharper. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I can see that the chin is still visible to your screen. So again, going to ghost this out. Think about perspective, okay? Think about the bottom of the orbicular sores turning all down here. See how you can see it even in his drawing, how he idealized it a little bit, turning all the way over here. So let's think about that as we draw in the contour. There's the bottom right there. I'm lightly indicating it for the bottom extremity of the orbicular sores as it turns all the way down here and creates what we know as the chin. Now a little tip with the um when you're drawing the boundary of the shadow, especially on an area that has a much softer edge here, is to draw the line by kind of uh, sketching in a tone. So this is what I mean, okay? Sketching in a little tone, but we're still putting in a boundary, okay, for the mandible. You don't want to put a harsh line here. Okay, now that we have that, I'm going to switch back to the Nitrum charcoal. Just lightly put in the shadow. So again, here's another example, okay? Light, shadow, and um, dark light. So this right here is the dark light, okay? Dark light. Terminator line right here, okay? This would be, um, eventually this will be reflected light over here. So this is reflected light. And then as we work our way up here, this is middle tone, middle tone, okay? And then again, middle tone here, as we work our way towards the uh, zygomatic bone, cheekbone. The middle tone is very quiet, very soft, 
very subtle. But the glory of it all is that you don't need that much to convey a sense of form. And you see this kind of simplicity in the tonal range in a lot of classical drawings. This is like a, a little secret to classical drawing, okay? And again, I'll go over it, okay? Light, shadow, terminator, right here. Dark light, right here. Middle tone, right here. Reflected light, right here. And even cast shadow, okay? There's a little bit of a cast shadow over here. And you can leave the lights open. Again, it's a very classical way to draw. And have fun with the mark making as well. Try to do um, hatch marks. So experiment with them. You'll find your own unique touch. Now with the ear, first things first, make sure it's in the right place. So horizontal here, so it's a little bit higher than the upper eyelid, but a little lower than the eyebrow. So I, I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty sure that's it's all right there. Then the, so I think the bottom of the ear can raise a little bit. This is called cutting your losses, so I'm moving this up. And by moving this up, I'm also creating a shadow. And I just made up the name cutting your losses. Literally, this is just like moving the earlobe up ever so slightly. It's a little graceful curve there. And, um, you know, classical in classical drawing, you really tend to emphasize on the mark making, on the linear aspect of the drawing, as opposed to massing everything in. It's a uh, it's a very practical way, I would say, to approach a study. Um, you know, if you were to do a drawing study for a painting. Um, and practical because there's just less value you have to worry about. So it's a little bit faster, I think. And again, where you see a soft edge like that, um, I know it's going to go off camera up there. So when you see a soft edge over here, a soft boundary, like this, just very simple middle tone. Very light mark. So now we can expand a little bit more on the middle tones. I'm gonna drop the light sensitivity a little bit. Yep, to about there. So now we're going to uh, first sharpen <laughs> the um, pencil a little bit. So I'm using sanding paper, a little thing of sanding paper. So we're going to sharpen the pencil a little bit. So now, okay, so if you're new to values, okay, so now um, this is going to be really uh, pretty much the most subtle thing that we're going to do for this drawing and right over here, okay? As Bob Ross would say, two hairs and some air, meaning very, very light touch here. This middle tone is a little bit lighter than this middle tone. So it's incredibly subtle. That's probably the most subtle value of all. And 
And just like in painting, uh, a drawing, really, you don't need that much stuff in the drawing for the drawing to read really, really well at a distance. So that's what we're trying to get at. That's what we're trying to get at with this drawing. So now, of course, we can start to elaborate on the uh, middle tones. So it's going to get just a little darker. So think about the hatch marks, okay? I um, I like to use diamonds. So, you know, this way, this way, this way creates kind of a diamond-like shape. I usually don't like to use... Um, vertical or horizontal hatch marks. I don't know, it's just my uh, aesthetic. You know, and sometimes I'll follow the form. So the bottom of the orbicularis horus here, as it turns away. And again, think about the um, you know the linear quality of the drawing, especially if you're going to be you know creating a classical drawing. So again, a much lighter touch for the contour over here, and then heavier as it approaches the the shadow. Then we're going to soften these edges just with the stump. Again, this will give it a little more of a, a classical flavor. Then we'll go right back in with the line. Very simple line, hatch marks, just to indicate kind of the rhythms of the hair. This goes all into here. Now we're going to put a much more refined mark. Simple straight lines and angles. And uh, here's a here's a, a tip, okay? Um, and this is just about aesthetic, about style, okay? Um, classical style, that is. See how I'm making these lines, okay? They're kind of like, you know, obvious straight lines. These are the marks, okay, that you're seeing here of, you know, someone that has studied a kind of a, in an atelier type system, you know, so here's how you can get the look of, you know, atelier training, meaning, you know, classical art training, you know, without having to attend an atelier, though if you can, I highly recommend it. You know, I, I really wish I could teach at an atelier. That would be, you know, one of my dreams. And then don't be afraid to draw in the little knots too. So here, 
And again, this is just going to give it more of a classical flavor. Or not. I don't know. It's really up to your own aesthetic. Soften up here. And now with the charcoal, or the uh, Nitrum charcoal, start to put in a little shadow back here. Making diagonal marks. And all into here. Kind of diagonal in this way. I'm not gonna put any of the details Diagonal. All right, so we are almost done with this classical drawing study. So now what I'm gonna do is just basically look for things that I don't want to remain in the final drawing. And the purpose of this, okay, is to show you how to draw, okay, in a classical manner such that you don't have to use a lot of values, okay, just a few values. And to really get you to understand, you know, how to arrange shapes, simple tone on paper, and how to deal with a difficult perspective, uh, you know, like this pose was quite difficult. Okay, so I'm gonna sit back again. All right, so after sitting back, I see that the neck, I can actually push in a little bit. The angle is a little closer to straight, being a straight angle. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the Neutrum. Again, I don't wanna make too heavy of a line, so the stump, just kind of make it a little bit lighter. Notice how I have a lighter side to the stump and a darker side. So that was using the lighter side. Okay. Now I'm going to sit back again. Okay, I think that's uh, just for the sake of vignette, put this little thing that's in the picture. I think this is like a, I don't know, some kind of tool that the model is carrying. Or not, never mind. It says me being indecisive. This means that we are very close to being done with this drawing study. I think that should be pretty good. That being said, I really hope that today's episode has helped you out. I hope that you will draw along with me and also feel free to paint along with me if you want to do like an umber sketch version of this. But again, the idea was to get the perspective first and foremost to show you how to deal with the difficult perspective. You know, just like this thing of, of turpentine, right? It's kind of like this is the model's head standing still and then this is the the turn, okay? See how it's kind of turned? I don't know if you can see that, but see how you can see the bottom of this? That is similar to seeing the bottom of this and therefore the ear moving up in perspective. But in any case, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. I really wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, more difficult drawing situations such as this one. Again, I wish you the best in all of your artwork, 
And of course, if you would like to support this channel even more, I have a Patreon account. So thank you so much if you decide to support me there. If you would like to share your own versions of these drawings, uh, these paint-alongs and these, I guess you can call this draw-alongs with us, feel free to share with us in my uh, Facebook account or my Instagram. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again on the next episode. And of course, there's always something. This shadow is just a little, or sorry, this half tone was just bothering me a little bit. There. All right, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.